Awesome. Just because I can't see anybody when it's up. Um, yeah, I can see it, Lane. Do we do we have to call the meeting to order, or is it just minutes, or you I, just take it? I think it's just you know what time we start, what time we end, which I can I can record. Okay. So it is. Okay. Six oh five. Yep. All right. So it is just a, a few folks here tonight. Um, and so this presentation we're going to do uh, for the purpose of the fact that it will be up on Orca Media for others to watch prior to uh, the vote on March 1st. And the purpose of tonight's meeting is really to provide information to the voters of our three communities um, about the proposed budget we've created to fund the 2022-23 school year ahead of that March 1st vote that's coming up really quick. Um, we are running this meeting in a hybrid format tonight. Um, and so if people do log in a little bit later, please recognize that it creates a little bit of challenges sometimes in our ability to interact. But I'll do my best to answer any questions uh, that come up as they arise. Um, in terms of our overall budget goals when we were developing uh, this budget to serve next year, um, prior to COVID, the primary goal when it came to budget, budgets was reaching what is called a level service budget. One that increases just enough each year to main our current programs and initiatives. And we were actually quite successful until COVID hit, as folks can probably imagine. So this budget is designed uh, to allow us to adapt to the new needs that were created by COVID in the form of unfinished learning and a whole new host of trauma-related issues we are encountering in students that impede learning. It is also designed to allow us to go after all of the board's ends. Um, for those of you in the community, ends are basically the goals the district has for our students. Um, and our focus has been on student performance in math, English, science, and adaptability. This budget will allow us to also begin working on social studies, life skills, and the arts. Lastly, uh, in the creation of this budget, we want to make sure that we are balancing our increases in spending against any new revenues that we receive so that the voters' tax rates remain stable, predictable, and change slowly over time. In this slide, we are only looking at the expense side of the budget because this is what voters vote upon. We have significant revenues to offset most of the new expenses which will be evident when we review how this budget will impact next year's tax rates for our three towns. We are looking at an increase in spending of $1 million for next year, about half of which is due to new staff to support the ENDS work, an increasing population in the elementary schools, the expansion of the preschool program, and the need to address the impact of COVID, which will be ongoing for some time. The other half of the increase is mandatory to meet our legal and contractual obligations under the master agreements with the staff and to balance the impact of Act 173 on the district. Um, for those of you that are in the know, Act 173 is a change in how special education is funded, the funding that we get from the state to support our special education services. As stated earlier, uh, half of the increase on the expense side of the budget is due to increases in staff and support of achieving the board's goals for our students. Um, these are the personnel positions that we are looking for. These increases are all in terms of personnel. Um, the first thing that we are looking for is an assistant superintendent, because if we want to be serious about improving academics and programming for our students, then this position is essential. Um, the main duties uh, for this individual would center on curriculum development and implementation student performance data analysis, student support systems, creating and implementing a K-12 staff professional development plan, grant management, and tying all of those pieces together so that they support one another as a cohesive district-wide learning plan. This person would also serve as the district's equity coordinator. And lastly, in fulfillment of the succession planning required under executive limitation, one of the board's policies, uh, this person would also be in a position to immediately take over all of my functions in case I am incapacitated. Uh, in terms of the two preschool positions, uh, it'll probably help if I provide the community with some background. The district re recognized the important role that early education plays in the future academic success of its students. 
and recently created a full-time free preschool program for all four-year-olds, try saying that three times fast, in the district while maintaining its part-time program for three-year-olds. This is a large program with significant regulatory requirements that needs a part-time coordinator to oversee things to ensure that we remain in compliance. In addition, the coordinator is charged with expanding our part-time three-year-old program over the next few years. Uh, the teacher um, it already exists, um, but right now they're being funded by a, uh, a grant, and we'd like to move them into the regular budget, that preschool teacher, um, because this is permanent changes to our programming, this preschool program. We are looking for a technical support specialist. Um, this is a person to help our IT problem, to support the information and technology end, and to support the creation of a new website and the ability to maintain it in-house. Right now, our website was built on an old proprietary system, and we cannot control it ourselves. We have an outside agent that does that. Um, and it would be nice to bring that website in-house um, so that we can keep it up to speed and up to date at a moment's notice as needed. Um, we are also looking to increase time for the two librarians, uh, the librarian at our two small librarians at our two small schools, Braintree and Brookfield. Um, and this is to provide the additional time that those librarians need to better support the digital literacy curriculum that we're developing and the teacher's academic programming. Uh, those librarians will often connect with the teachers about what they're teaching and the projects that they have with the students and help them enhance their lesson plans. Um, and this is also to provide additional preparation and team time to the elementary teachers. There is a lot of work going on in math and science and ELA and those teachers need time together to be able to do that work. Um, increasing the time for the librarians allows us because when the students are with the librarians, the teachers have time to meet. We are also looking for a classroom teacher for Randolph Elementary School, and this is to increase, this is to accommodate increased enrollment. Uh, the school itself is at a six year high in terms of enrollment. And in fact, the district is also at a six year high at the elementary level in terms of new enrollments. And most of those enrollments are happening in grades K to four, so they will be with us for some while. The COVID pandemic um, really kind of shed a light on the fact that we do need some additional time um, for a school nurse. Right now, our school nurse is shared between the tech center and RUHS. It would be nice to have some dedicated time just for the technical center. And lastly, in terms of this uh, discretionary spending, we are looking for a new math teacher to be able to hire a new math teacher at RUHS at the high school. And this is to decrease class sizes and to provide additional support to struggling learners because we want to be able to ensure that all students are able to gain foundational knowledge in mathematics that's going to support them in the next stage of their lives. So the first part of our discussion is about local taxes and what this budget is going to do. Um, the second part of the discussion will focus in a little bit more on the surplus funds uh, that we generated last year and our request to the voters in terms of allocating those funds to future purposes. Um, local taxes, it's important to remember, are controlled by two factors. One that's within the district's control and one that is not. The Orange Southwest School District's budget is within our control because we exert that control by balancing what we spend relative to the revenues that we generate. If your tax rates were only based on the school side of the equation, your rates next year with this budget would go down by about seven cents per hundred dollars of assessed value, or about $200 for the year for an average price home in this area. Average price being $281,000. On the school side of things, yes, we are proposing a $1 million increase in spending, but that increase is more than balanced by growth in our generation of revenue. What is out of our control is what's called the common level of appraisal, and it's a factor that the state uses as part of its tax formula. In simple terms, if the values of homes in your town have gone up over the past year, then the CLA will change so that you pay more in taxes. Right? The value of your home goes up, so you pay a little bit more in taxes because of that added value. CLA has to do with the change in the value of real estate in the town. It has nothing to do with the schools and what we are spending. 
using Brookfield as an example, um, based on re real estate sales in Brookfield last year, the state has determined that Brookfield residents are only paying 96.69% of the taxes they should because real estate values went up last year while the town's assessment has not changed in that same time period. Expected impact um, by town. If you take a look, and this is based upon the average home values. Um, and this slide does take both factors into account, school impact and CLA, to provide what your next year's tax rates would be um, if this budget is approved. Um, we spent some time examining the 2022-23 proposed district budget and its potential impact on your taxes. And that's the first thing that will require a vote on the school ballot. And this is the impact, right? So what you're looking at is Braintree. Um, the value of your homes actually decreased a little bit. I think you were just assessed about a year ago. So relative to that assessment and relative to the cost of what houses were going for last year, um, the value of your homes went down a little bit. So your taxes are gonna go down as well. So what you should see on an average uh, priced home of $281,000, is you should see your total taxes on the school um, taxes go down by $216. For Brookfield, you should see your taxes go down by $9. And Randolph, for the entire year, um, you actually had the largest increase in the value of your homes for our three towns. Um, your taxes will go up by $82 for the year. Now, like I said, this is about the taxes, but to make sure that folks are well informed uh, when they go out to vote, we also need to talk about the other items on the ballot. And these have to do with the use of surplus funds. So it's important to understand what surplus funds are and what, what reserve funds are. Surplus is what's left over at the end of a fiscal year. Reserve funds are surplus monies that have been set aside into an account for a specific use in the future. You as the voters in March can approve the movement of surplus money into reserve accounts. In terms of our surplus during the last school year, all the districts around the state uh, used the first round of federal grant money that came in to help us um, cover the additional costs we experienced due to COVID. Um, and we used that grant money to offset those costs, but there was enough left over that we were able to also offset a lot of our normal expenses. Because of this, we have just over $2 million to allocate in surplus funds. And in terms of my recommendations, um, $1 million of that $2 million will go to reducing the burden on taxpayers. It will be split into three equal amounts to be used over the next three budget years to reduce your taxes. I'm asking the voters to allocate the remainder, that last one million, into our various reserve accounts as there are some needs on the horizon that we should plan for, which will be explained in a slide or two. Last year, we created a plan to use the previous year's surplus funds to reduce the tax burden on our taxpayers for the next three years. This chart shows how that was broken down. We used 826,000 of it to support this current year's budget and set aside the remainder to support the following two years in equal installments of $413,000 each. I am recommending that the second one million of our $2 million surplus be split into three equal amounts and used to support the next three district budgets. So you see that there, right? 2022, the first third of that million would be used to help offset people's taxes. The second year, it would be used to offset people's ta taxes in the third. I apologize, I'm letting a new person into the meeting. So I am recommending just that, that a million of the current uh, surplus be split into three equal amounts and used to support the next three district budgets. It makes sense to lessen the tax burden as much as possible in these uncertain times, since we don't know when the impact of COVID will decrease or when federal monies will dry up. It makes sense to carry the support as far into the future as possible, as opposed to doing it all in a single year. Lastly, spreading it out like this means we should not have a cliff year, a sudden end to this subsidized support that we've created 
which could have a large impact on the budget all at once. Hopefully, the education fund will increase as the economy improves to balance the need for these subsidizations in the future. In terms of how I would like um, to allocate the remainder of the surplus funds, um, this is what this chart explains. In this slide, you can see the, the reserve funds that exist and how much they currently contain. The last column represents my request to the voters on how to distribute the remaining surplus monies across these accounts. And this would be done by voting yes on ballot articles 10 through 16. If we start off with the first line there, vehicle and bus, that's the transportation fund. The transportation fund is currently pretty large. Uh, we've got a lot of money in there. And we typically use less than 100,000 per year of it. Uh, we use it primarily to replace our buses to make sure that none of our buses are more than seven years old. And we also use it to replace our fleet vehicles um, when they've kind of aged out of their useful life. So at this point in time, I'm not recommending adding any more to that reserve fund. Second line down, building and maintenance, which is called our facilities reserve fund. We actually have a huge unknown coming our way in terms of the required PCB testing that was mandated by the legislature last year. Any facility that was built or renovated prior to 1979 is likely affected, and we have two buildings that fall into that category. This amount is to ensure we have what we need for remediation if necessary. In terms of the legal fund, as folks that haven't been watching the news lately, there is an exodus going on from the teaching profession. After three years of COVID and the potential exposure faced every day by staff working in close quarters within schools, this means that the quality of the candidate pool will likely decrease, which will result in more human resources issues that must be managed often with the help of legal counsel. In terms of the special education reserve fund, um, the change in the special education law, which affects funding goes into effect next year. Based on their current formula that the state gave us, this district will lose $200,000 it would normally receive. The current legislature may change the formula further, meaning that we may suffer an even more negative financial impact after our budget is finalized and the March 1st vote goes through. We need to have some reserve funds on hand to cover this unknown. Additionally, once enacted, the district receives a set amount to provide these services each year. If a student should move into our town with severe needs after the start of the year, we may not have what we need to cover the costs of their services. So having funding in this reserve account to cover this unknown is a wise choice. In terms of the operations fund, this account houses the monies needed to reduce the tax burden for the next three years. 333,000 has already been rolled into reducing next year's budget, leaving 666,000 that needs to be allocated to subsidize the 2023 and 2024 budgets. As part of the operations fund allocation, I'm also requesting that the voters approve an additional $250,000 to support three important initiatives. That's where that 916 comes from. It's the 666. Um, to subsidize taxes and another 215, excuse me, 250 to support these initiatives. The first initiative is that um, a few years back, probably about five years ago now, the state uh, had moved to have all districts use the same financial software um, to make the data exchange between their main computer systems a little bit easier. The software that they chose has been a bit of a failure. Um, the districts that are using it, it has not been all that useful. And so the state is at the point where it's got to make some decisions uh, about whether it's going to continue moving forward with that software or if it's going to turn around, which I believe is the more likely case, and say, hey, um, districts, do what you want um, as long as it communicates well, your software communicates well with the state systems. The problem with this is, is that when the state was going to mandate we all use the same software, they were going to provide us with that software for free. If they change their mind this legislative session, we may have to provide this software on our own. And that's a part of what that 250000 would go towards. The second 
initiative um, that that 250,000 would go towards is for the creation of a new district website um, that is on an in-house platform that we can manage ourselves. Like I said, we have a, a website. It's a, it's a darn good website. I'm very appreciative of the people that have managed it um, over these years, but it is managed by an outside agency. Um, and it'll be a lot easier if we can just do it ourselves. Hopefully it'll be a system that's easy enough that if teachers want to maintain websites related to their classes um, that have links to it, they can do just that. Um, and then the last piece um, of that 250,000, the last initiative, is for the creation of an archival database um, to digitize our extensive collection of records, um, both employment records and student, student records, um, that have piled up over the years, and we have to keep a lot of those into perpetuity. So we literally have rooms that are filled with file cabinets that could be used for other things um, that are taken up to house all this paper. Um, and we'd like to get a system in place where we can digitize it, and then people can actually find it quite easily um, by searching using that software. So in summary, these are our requests to the voters for the allocation of surplus funds. And those allocations can only happen if folks vote yes on Articles 10 through 16. I do want to personally thank our communities for their support over the past several years and the positive impact that that support has had on our students. If you have budget questions, I think we had one person um, log in who's not, not a board member. The board members are certainly welcome um, to ask questions as well. Um, but if you have a budget question that, that's not answered tonight or something comes up a little bit later, all you have to do is um, shoot me an email, and please don't hesitate to do that. I am happy to respond to the questions that you have. So, let me shut down here for a second. Let me check to see if anybody has any questions. Give me a moment to switch out of presentation. So, I, I do have a question if you can hear me. I can, I can hear you, Kevin. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm on the road, and I apologize. I had a meeting up in Montpelier. It took me a long time to get on Google. So hopefully you can hear the question. And I am moving, so if it cuts off, my apologies. First of all, I want to thank you, Lane, for your work as superintendent, and thank the board members for their work. It's a tough job, especially during COVID, and all the work you're doing. The second point I want to say clearly is my question comes as a uh, taxpayer and citizen of Randolph and not as my uh, working position within the education uh, agency. So and, and that, given that, I want to ask this with this context. My understanding is the overall budget is increased by about $900,000 for the SU, um, and that you've done everything you can to maintain or decrease costs and expense in the face of a lot of additional expenses with COVID, et cetera. My question, though, that I did not see, I saw Title I funds and other federal funds there at something like $860,000, but what I didn't see in the budget at all was the vast amount of federal funds coming in through emergency acts that are going into the SU. So my question is, I understand that those federal emergency funds, which are in the millions, yeah. cannot be used to offset taxes. However, in some communities, some tax increases are going to come forth based on this proposed budget. Given that the state of Maine, for example, has their picture to propose during COVID and during a loss of economic times like this challenging time is to prevent tax increases in all of its states because of the federal influx of funds. I'm wondering why, maybe I'm missing something here, some of those federal funds can't be directed towards things that are allowable and are line items in the budget, such as instruction, behavioral resources, et cetera, et cetera, that would allow you to present a budget that's cost neutral in this difficult economic time. Thanks for taking my question. Yeah, no, our, our budget actually on the, uh, on the school side of things, not only is cost neutral, but we actually cut um, the cost by seven cents per hundred dollars of assessed value. What has to go into the mix, as you probably well know, is uh, the CLA um, has an impact as well, and that's kind of out of our control. In terms of the actual federal funding that has come in, um, a lot of our surplus that we are pumping or hoping that the voters are gonna vote so that we can pump a million of it back into subsidizing taxes 
came from the ESSER 1 funds. Um, right? A lot of that money was used uh, to cover the initial costs of responding to COVID, the additional supplies, a lot of the HVAC work to make sure the ventilation was good. Um, but we were also given um, directions by the state to try to use it for as much of our, our costs as, as we could that were above and beyond that. And we did that. And so um, that's one of the reasons why we have a, such a large surplus at the end of this year. And again, I'm recommending that a million of that go back in to offset people's taxes for the next three years. The other million, like I, we talked about for a little while, was to have um, the second million go into reserve funds because we do have a lot of upcoming expenses um, that we want to be prepared for and make sure that, that, that we can handle. Um, and a lot of them are kind of semi-unknowns, right? We don't know what's going to happen when the P PCB testing occurs. We've got two buildings that are in the age range that it's quite possible that, you know, we might get some hits there. And we want to be prepared um, with reserve funds from that surplus to be able to cover the remediation of that. Um, ESSER 2 funds uh, we have used primarily for instruction this year. Um, a lot of it was mental health services. Uh, we are doing a lot of after school tutoring for students that we've identified um, need the extra help because of unfinished learning. Um, there have been additional supports um, in terms of interventionists also during the day to help students get caught up. So that was ESSER 2. ESSER 3, which we are in the process of completing um, the communications process for, that is going to be used at this point in time uh, to continue uh, with a lot of those new hires that we did um, to support you know, the educational programming to support struggling students last year. Um, so we've got a pretty good plan out there. I actually, um, to the other question that you had, if I'm trying to remember them all, um, in terms of the federal funding that came in through ESSER 1, 2, and ESSER 3 ARP, um, I talked with our business manager about it because we do have the Title I funds that show up within the regular budget. Um, she did some checking and said that it's not required to have the, uh, the ARP ESSER funds um, or any of the ESSER funds kind of reported in that, that budget um, as a whole. I think it gets a little confusing uh, to the taxpayers to have it there. Because, you know, if, it's one thing if we're showing that, you know, we're actually, it's, we got a $21 million budget, um, but only, you know, 16, 17 million of it are we actually asking for from the taxpayers because the remainder of that 21 million is, is the, the grant funds that come in. And so sometimes if they see that, that 21 million of this larger amount, um, they get a little confused about where that's coming from. Um, so I think I touched on most in, in a very brief format, but I'm happy to talk in more detail if you'd like. All right, I, I would like to a little bit, but I don't need to take up your meeting time with that, if you can still hear me. Oh, yeah, it's, my, a, it's my, just, my it's just us. Is, oh, okay. Yeah, the, 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 as a taxpayer, you know, I, I am seeing a, a significant tax increase again. I guess that's due to the state CLA operation going into the state system. But I'm, what, I was, what I was trying to articulate is there's a state like Maine that I had lived in before I moved here which is working through that process to make sure towns don't have to absorb, and local taxpayers don't have to absorb tax increases during a time of COVID. Yet, yet I'm just picking on me irrationally, but individually, there are plenty of taxpayers in the district who are gonna pay more money right now in a very tough economic time because of the way the, the, the uh, state funding operation works. So I guess my sense is listening to you, and it sounds like you've worked very hard at this with your board, but that the issue more lies in with the way the tax the state redistributes the funding and not so much what the town is doing locally to maintain operations, respond to COVID, and to keep the budget as affordable as possible. Yeah, Does that so sound there, correct? Yeah, so there's a, you, you've got the school tax and you've got the town tax, they're separate. I'm only talking on the school tax side of things. And like right. I said, the parts that are within our control, there were actually, we, everything was cut across the three towns next year because our revenues were so great. Even though that we did increase our expense side of things to try to cope with COVID and some of the new issues that we're seeing because of it. Um, and some of the initiatives that we had that were longstanding anyway in terms of improving academic outcomes for students. Um, our revenues have increased significantly. So in terms of just the school side of things, like I said, it's about a 7% decrease for $100 of assessed value of a home. 
Now, if you're in Randolph, I live in Randolph as well. Um, you're looking, like I said, on the average priced home of $281,000. Um, you're looking at an $82 for the entire year uh, increase. Why is that happening? Because the values of our homes over the last year have gone up significantly, uh, probably by at least 10%. Um, and so, you know, because the values of our homes are worth more, we end up paying more in taxes um, uh, to cover that, that change in the real estate market. And that's the CLA piece. It's very, it's complicated. I'm, I'm talking about it in incredibly simplistic terms. Um, but that's where the primary increase what is. Was your, what was your... You know, I appreciate this very much, and I'm sorry I'm the only one on, but what was your turnout on the uh, meeting last week, your informational meeting, Mike, just out of curiosity? Not, not much. I think I had about five people. Three of them were in faculty folks. Um, part of the reason, I think, for that is because we actually we do a pretty good job of communicating. Um, pretty much everything that I've said tonight came yeah. out um, both in the annual report um, but it's also, I sent out a series of communications on, on the budget. So everything we talked about tonight went out in a series of two communications. The first one talks specifically about tax rates and the overall budget. And then the second communication that came out a couple of days later talked about um, the surplus and, and how it would be nice to allocate them into reserve funds for, fu for future use. So I think what I've seen happen over the course of my time here is that the more that we do the communications online and send out the community messages, the fewer and fewer people I end up seeing at the, at the, at the meetings and the open forums. Well, that makes sense, and I appreciate that. I don't think I was on that list, so I wrote to you and asked to get on that list of whether it's a community email list. I submitted it to the, uh, the Orange uh, Southwest District uh, email site, and I also wrote you an email asking to get on those Perfect. lists so I can get those emails. Sure. I've been I've been tentative in the back in the past, and I've had kids in the system who've asked me not to ever get involved in anything to do with Randolph. So I've stayed out of it. But um, I am interested in what goes on in the town. Yeah. And um, now that they're grown up and in college in California, one went off to London for a while and is back in Cleveland with a job that makes more money than I make now. <laughs> I'm able to uh, participate a little bit more. So that, I appreciate your taking the time, and I do appreciate your work. And again, the work of Ann and others on the board of what they're doing in the town. I just was curious because maybe I misread some articles in the Herald, but it seemed to indicate that people in Randolph were paying an increase in taxes, and it was all and only due to the school budget. It had nothing to do with the town. So I may have misread that, um, but I understand what you're saying about the $82. That, that definitely confirms what I saw online this afternoon when I looked at the, it was hard to find the budget online. I, I found it through the Braintree School uh, 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 site. I found that information. So I appreciate what you're saying makes sense. And I appreciate the work you're doing at the school. So thank you. Yeah, no, I appreciate that. I'll, I'll check for your email um, tomorrow morning. I'll shoot you the communications. It may take, uh, I'll, I'll let Tina know in the, the information tech department. Um, they'll get you yeah. connected so that you're, you're getting the broadband emails and communications when they come out. It may take them a day to, to get it get it set up, but you should be set up very shortly. But yeah, it's well, a, it, it is a good point. Um, it's just people need to remember there are there your taxes, your overall taxes come from two additional sources. You've got the town tax. Their process right. is completely separate from the school. We're com two completely separate en entities. The larger yep. tax burden you guys pay obviously is is from the school side. Um, but our, our process is completely separate from theirs. Oh, yeah. Whatever. Okay, I, I, I understand that. What I'm understanding and taking away from this is that uh, whatever increases I'm facing, which have been somewhat significant over the last several years as a taxpayer who lives in Randolph Center, are more attributable to the town than they are to the school system. And some are due to the whole state school system overall, which I understand that yeah. as well. But, well, so, but this particular, go ahead. We've, we've, um, we've actually asked the town for right up until, I'd have to go back and look, two, three years ago, we actually asked the town for some pretty significant increases. Um, and yep. one of the reasons was because um, the mentality around um, budgets changed a little bit. Um, when I came in, I think it's five years ago now, four years ago, somewhere in there, um, the previous superintendent, who was an incredibly brilliant man, um, I mean, he, yep. he was here and his purpose um, 
in my understanding, the board brought him in for was to keep budgets incredibly low, and he did a very good job of that. Um, but we talked about at the time um, that if you keep the budgets too low, it's kind of like compound interest in reverse. So you right. actually, things are increasing faster than your budgets are just in terms of, you know, the additional monies that we pay to, pe to the teachers under their contracts, um, cost right. of living increases, um, inflation, things like that. And so over the course of 10 years, in, we did an analysis I shared with the community at the time, um, they were actually losing ground overall. Yep. Um, and so they were in this cycle of having to cut programs, having to cut staff, um, to keep up with trying to maintain these, these, these level budgets. And so the community stepped up to the plate um, for, uh, actually it was two years. The first year they gave us an 11% increase to, to counteract all those years of, of very tight budgets. The second right. year it was gonna be level service, but we got hit with um, the healthcare negotiations with the state. Um, when the healthcare state took over the healthcare negotiations, took it out of the hands of the districts. Some districts benefit benefited from that. Some districts got hurt. We got hurt bad. Um, so you know we were looking at a half million to three three quarters of a million in Im impact um, that we were going to have to supply from the taxpayers with that change at that point in time. Um, so those were two two significant increases in the reason that they were. And then after those two years, we were doing what was called level service just increasing things enough to keep all the things that we had without having to give anything up. Um, but no, COVID, and I, but COVID's no, that makes that. a lot of, go yeah. ahead. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt you. Go, go ahead. ahead. Did you finish? I, I, no, I, I was going to share that. I had a lot of respect for your predecessor, but I think he sometimes lost sight and this is with due respect to him of the value of education and the, the importance of keeping uh, the top teachers and respecting the community as much as you did in trying to just keep the budget stable, which you've just articulated some reasons why that can work in the opposite way over time. So I, 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 want, I want people to know, including your board members, whoever is on, that I am very pro-education. My, my, my life has turned from a prior career into education, and I don't want my, my remarks about taxes to be misunderstood oh, no. about what I think about the value of education is, because I think it's extraordinarily probably the most important thing we do in the state. So um, I ask it though, and I just from a perspective of having been there, and I don't mind sharing this publicly with your board members, that our taxes have gone up by over three times or 350% in the 19 years we've been here. And I don't think, and this is not school alone, we have not seen a 350% increase in services or value, including inflation and everything else. So it's, it's, it's very expensive um, to live in Vermont, we're seeing young people leave because of that. It's part of the reason I got interested in the legislature, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So th those are my overall remarks. I completely understand what you said about the town budget being distinct from the state, from the school budget and distinct from the state school budget. Um, and a lot of that's not in your control. So my remarks are indicative of, are you using the monies that you just described, the ESSER 1, the ESSER 2, the American Recovery Act plan um, uh, money valuably or not? It sounds like you're fixed hard on doing that appropriately for our students. Um, and I, again, I thank you for your services and the board's services as well. I just wanted to be clear about how much we were facing. It sounds like it's not significant and uh, that you're working hard. You're also putting aside some money for, uh, as I understand what you just described and I read, to uh, put away a million dollars over three years to try to keep taxes under control as expenses indefinitely amount. And I also want to appreciate and thank you before I get off because I know it's been a bear I deliberately do not work in this particular district because I live here, so I work in several other work with several other districts across the state. But I think that you guys have done a great job in a very, very difficult uh, time with the disease, um, which no one ever anticipated would go into its full second through second year, entering a third almost as we sit here. Um, so I commend you for that. So thank you all for your time. I, I appreciate it. I think I understand that, and I'll look forward to reading your correspondence. And I know I can send you an email if I have any further questions before the town meeting, correct? Oh yeah, no, and I appreciate that. I appreciate you being here tonight um, because the, uh, just the communication is awesome. Um, it, my first couple of years that I was here, you know, we'd have our open forums, we'd have 30 people in the audience, you know, and the topics were always tough ones, but I actually find that kind of fun because it gets you thinking about things that, that you wouldn't normally think about. 
And so I'm hoping yep. that once things subside a bit um, and people are a little bit more free and moving around a little bit more that we're able to return um, to that, that kind of closeness and those kind of discussions. So I enjoyed this tonight with you. Well, I appreciate you and I want you to know that I checked with my management because I said I, I, I want to go to the meeting, but if you tell me I can't, and they said, oh, absolutely, as long as you say you're not working for the agency, your comments don't represent agency policy. Yep. One of the directors told me I'm going to be attending my own town meeting and I'm going to be asking them what they're doing with the millions of dollars that we're giving them. So yeah. we were kind of laughing on the phone together, um, but I don't know what you're doing because I'm not reviewing. I'm not one of the people reviewing your RFS or your S or one or two. And I, and I deliberately don't talk to those people because that would be not right. It would be interference in a way that's not appropriate. So I try to just approach this call as someone who loves education and wants to be supportive in my town, but wants to learn a little bit more about what's happening. So I appreciate your time on the call. I hope I made it slightly more interesting than just meeting with your astute board members who yeah. are fine and, people. <laughs> and in terms of the, um, the ESSER funding and what it's been spent on and, and not, um, yep. One of the requirements for ESSER 3 is a spending plan. So my hope is, is that by the end of uh, next week, after folks are back from vacation, um, we're in the process of creating a, a, a section of the website that is specifically devoted to that. And so everything will be laid out um, in those plans to show you know, what we spent it on, how much we spent, and what the plans are for the, the, the ARP, ARP funds. Um, for the coming yep. two years. So. All right. Well, I wish you well with that. I'm sure you'll you'll think about that with your board carefully and make some some good decisions for your students. Yeah, I appreciate. It. Hey, you take care. Yep. You too. Thank you again for letting me participate. Yep. Have a good night. Yep. You too. Bye bye. So, Ann and Chelsea, unless you either of you have questions, um, we would be closing the meeting at. I don't know, what do you got? I got 644. I have 646. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. Well well done, Lane. Thank yep. you very much. You, you too. Thank I, you. I appreciate it. Hopefully you get some time to relax this week. All right. You too. <laughs> <laughs> Take care. Take care. <laughs>